All right, we're at a point where I can start the railing, at least the railing up the top. The steps have to be refinished before I could do it down there. But what I did is I put some masking tape where the foot of the posts will be. And so that gave me a rough idea of how long the, the rails need to be. And we're doing something cool with this railing. We're actually gonna make a frame around the old railing. We're gonna still use the old railing and it's still gonna be black, but the whole frame is gonna be wood and it's gonna be white. So it's really gonna be a nice contrast with wood and iron. So looking forward to it. Stay tuned. Once upon a time, a boy met a girl working for a mouse. They fell in love and realized they'd never own their own home working for the mouse. So they packed up a big truck and moved to New Jersey, lived in a basement to save money for a year, and bought a foreclosure to fix up while they lived there. This is their story. I designed this project to just use standard 1x4 or 1x6 boards. And that way, because I didn't have a table saw on site and I wouldn't need to rip anything. And I'm just using a normal 10 inch miter saw here. Now, because the project, all the wood on the project was going to be white anyway, I bought pre-primed boards to save time. And these boards are actually pine and they're finger jointed, which means that they cut out the knots and they join short boards together to make long boards. The benefit of that is that we don't have any knots to show through the paint later and the boards tend to be straighter. Now because the boards are already primed, I can't use wood glue. It just wouldn't stick to the paint. So I used construction adhesive and two inch finish nails with my nail gun, because I'm really bad with a hammer. And I joined two boards together to form like an L. And then I joined the two L's together to make the square posts. And these are gonna be way stronger than any solid post and they have the benefit of being hollow so that I can use a block in the middle of it as you'll see later. And that's how I attach them to the floor. Now all these joints will get caulked before painting later but they're not going to be hidden completely. It's still going to look handmade and that's part of its charm. Now the bases on the posts are made with 1x6 boards mitered on 45 degrees and they just give it a nice chunky foot at the bottom. Now the first post that I installed was actually this partial post against the wall and I thought there was going to be a stud going straight up the wall and there wasn't. Um, I guess the way the framers did it they just put cross pieces so I had to put another block right there where the original railing was attached to the wall and that's how I hit the framing at the top. Now that board on the wall is the only one that was ripped. It's not a full width 1x4. So that one I actually had to take home and, and use my table saw to rip it. But other than that, all the other boards are full 1x4s or 1x6s. And I love having a nail gun. It just makes it go so much easier and so much faster. Here you can see the foot around the partial post as well. Now the next thing I'm working on is the rails that go between the posts on the bottom. And they're made from three one by fours. But they do have spacer blocks that are an inch and three quarters wide. And you'll see where that inch and three quarters comes from later. But that space is the two boards parallel to each other, inch and three quarters apart, and then there will be a cap board that goes across the top, and that's what the railing will actually sit on. So it's three boards. But the spacer blocks are nailed to the floor, and I use a laser level to make sure that I keep everything nice and straight. And then I put a couple more spacer blocks vertically and they help keep the boards parallel.
Now to attach the post to the floor, I used a 2x4 and I cut a block that fits inside the post and I drilled through that a pilot hole that goes down into the floor and I'm going to use a 6 inch lag screw to attach that to the floor nice and tight. Now, it probably didn't need to be such a long screw, but, you know, anything worth doing is worth overdoing. Wanted to make sure it wasn't going to go anywhere. And then I just put everything together loosely, and eventually I will add the pieces for the base on the two sides where the bottom rails are. And with that spacer block between them, you can see here, I just put it loosely in place, and that enables me to build the other rail on the other side. And then once those two rails were built, I could measure for the railing, the old iron railing that I was going to cut up. And the sawzall is the perfect tool for this job. You could use a hacksaw if that's all you have, it'll just take longer. So then once I cut the railings, they were all dusty from being in the garage where I was cutting out wood, so I had to clean them off really good and bring them in for a test fit. Put it down, down on the thing. There you go. There we go. There you go. Okay. Oh, the fit is oh good. Oh my god. Fit is good. That is gorgeous. I like it with the black on the bottom. I don't oh think we should paint the bottom. Oh my god. Yeah, I can agree. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Cat, look at this. <laughs> it is so beautiful. <laughs> I like and Kathy, it. seal of approval. I know. Uh, actually, mm. can we have to switch places. You have to come down here. After getting everyone's approval, the railings went back outside for a coat of gloss black spray paint by my wife, and I gotta give her credit because it was her idea to use the railings in this way anyway. Now the size of my inch and three quarter spacers came from the size of the top railing. That's an inch and three quarters wide. And so I made the spacers so that the top rail would fit over them by five eighths of an inch. And they're made exactly the same way as the bottom rails. I used three 1x4s with the spacers between them and I put a spacer on each post on each side and you can see spacers in the middle and I put a little bit of dab of construction adhesive there just to make sure that the railing doesn't rattle. And then they fit over the top and get attached with nails. After the two sections of railing were in place, then I could actually screw the post to the floor. I just used a couple of long screws into that 2x4 block that I had bolted down before. And then put the bases around them to cover the screws. The posts are capped with two pieces. You can see there's a square 1x6 there, and then a a uh, finial at the top that's just made from a 2x6 that I chamfered the edges on. After caulking all the joints and filling all the nail holes, I put on two coats of white semi-gloss, and I like to apply it with a roller nice and heavy, and then I smooth it out to give it a nice clean brushed look. Now a lesson learned is that I should have actually put a first coat of gloss paint on each one of these sections before assembly. It just would have made it that much easier to just put a second coat on it and it would have gone faster. Now these two sections of railing cost me about $150 for the wood. And we already had the paint and everything else, but reusing those railing sections really saved a lot of money. That worked out to be about $8 a foot, much cheaper than any other solution and everybody loves the look of the contrast between the white wood and the black metal. It's just so beautiful, such a feature when you walk in the house. And if you're interested in seeing how I finish the rest of the steps and the railing going down to the basement, you're just gonna have to subscribe and watch every episode of The Living Flip. Thanks for watching. 
If you'd like to win one of several official Living Flip hats, complete with a Handy Dad TV button, please be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and leave a comment below. Thanks.